I'm a climate economist, um, which means uh, basically anything and everything related to climate risk, managing climate risks on the one hand, and uh, climate opportunities on the other. Starting first week freshman year in college, um, I wanted to study economics. I wanted to study what makes people tick. Um, how do we decide as individuals, as society, um, to frankly do certain things and not others? How do we optimize our lot in life, given constraints, sort of the art and science of economics? Um, and then how do you apply this to, frankly, the biggest problem out there, climate change? Tackling climate change is not all just wind turbines and solar panels. Uh, yes, that is important, it's crucial. But yeah, then there are more controversial topics. Uh, nuclear power is one, geoengineering. Uh, sucking CO2 back out of thin air, on the one hand, air capture, and then possibly even solar geoengineering, uh, making the planet more reflective, cooling the planet simply by sending more solar radiation, more sunlight, back into space. Um, <laughs> that sounds scary. Um, it is. It's potentially very risky, but yes, frankly, we are at a stage where we should be doing research even into that kind of technology. The big question, the big problem as a social scientist, as an economist, when one looks at any of these technologies, nuclear power on the one hand, geoengineering on the other, is what's often called moral hazard, green moral hazard. Basically, does even talking about these technologies, might talking about these technologies detract from the need to cut emissions in the first place, um, to tackle CO2 emissions through the sort of technologies that we know work, we know are available, and that need to be deployed at scale. Um, and this green moral hazard is a real problem, a real potential problem. The name of the game in many ways is to turn it on its head, to make sure that even talking about nuclear power on the one hand, solar geoengineering on the other, motivates us to do more, to do more to cut CO2 emissions now with available technologies, with the sort of technologies that we know are cheaper than the fossil fuel alternative. Um, and frankly, there's a lot of movement in that direction too. What I'm most excited about this semester is I'm teaching a class that's 20% problem. Yes, <laughs> climate is a problem. 80% of it is the solution. It's the positive things, the positive tipping points. Um, things are really moving, whether that's renewables on the one hand, um, finance, business leadership on the other. Things are moving in the right direction at an increasing speed. Um, rapidly approaching the sort of positive tipping points that we know are necessary, we know are important, and in fact are happening. The key bit when you look at business and climate, business and the environment is, it's not just corporate or social responsibility, something you know, businesses do when going is good, when you try to put a tree on the annual report to sort of look green. Right? It ought to be, it must be core to what you do as a business. Efficiency, using limited resources more efficiently. It's good for the planet, of course it is. And yes, it takes public policy to fully incorporate this negative carbon externality. But using limited resources more efficiently, it's good for business, full stop. So going out and looking for these opportunities core to one's business strategy is crucial to tackle the climate crisis on the one hand, and it is good for business.